Hello everyone, welcome back to Group D, or the bottom of the industrial estate by Group D. So today we say, tonight we say goodbye to the 86 Sultan El Cassini's DMAC 86 with cool camera. And before it goes, I said I would uh, do a detailed look at it as Right, so let's start with the obvious, which is the exterior. This is pretty much made up of kind of off the shelf stuff here at Group D. So the bonnet is good line, the bumper is run free, You've got fiberglass wings, quarters, doors, uh, like a run free side skirt, entry, fender flares, whatever you want to call them. Fiberless boot door, it's got the rear clamshell that we do here and it actually has a genuine uh, plastic bumper and like a Mercury R diffuser on it so yeah it's not totally custom it's a lot of bits and pieces put together the custom side of it comes with the rear wing all these extensions on the side skirts just simple aluminium and underskirt we like these rubber strips because they make the cars look lower than they actually are because we need a bit of ride height to make them work properly drive properly and then of course you have the front with the splitter and the canards and these swords as well i don't like wheel poke on the front so i tend to cover up the uh, wheels as best i can and of course you have the turbo fans so mean looking nice mirrors not huge mirrors just perfect size and got NECA ducts in the bonnet they actually are purposeful they direct airflow to the plug leads which anyone with a v8 will know you know plug leads going down through exhaust runners can cause issues so we keep a constant flow of cool air in the area and that seems to mean that the plug leads last so lots of little things from the experience of dealing with other cars so outside wise that is the look and it looks so fucking cool all right so aerodynamics wise nothing is really made for downforce or any sort of control of the air the front is very much cosmetic uh, the turbo fans are non-functional as far as I'm concerned but just cosmetic but maybe they do something who knows the rear on the other hand any design work we do in the rear it does focus around uh, intake air for the radiator and focuses around control of tire smoke and stuff nothing to do with rear downforce or anything um, control of the tire smoke is a factor we consider over everything else really so aero wise that is the design philosophy on it it's nothing to create downforce or anything uh it is more smoke management and just general aesthetics making the car look cool as i can right so interior carbon dash haltech ic7 digital display let's turn on the master leave for prying the pumps we um did this custom foot plate nice and tasty um, some nice billet aluminium pedals just to make the pedals a little bit extra nice i don't really like any sort of aftermarket pedal box or anything none of them really work well um so this is just a regular setup the brakes are excellent they work first time every time sometimes keeping it simple depending on the customer and stuff sometimes keeping it simple is the way to go um there's a bit of a left to right and drive conversion going on underneath here so it's not 100% exactly like you might want it but at the time during the time frame it was a bit of a problem to get everything done there's your ic7 which is like the coolest dash you can get cool temperature low um you have the group d handbrake here and you have a four speed geforce gsr probably one of the best gearboxes you can buy uh, we have carbon door cards with handles we have all steering wheel controls here, power steering, start the motor, interior lights, as you can see, 
handy at night time. Uh, they also light up the boot or trunk in the rear. You have radio back to the pits, wipers, you have a spare here and you have uh, exterior lights. So everything is here, no switches or nothing. Everything's on the steering wheel. The steering wheel obviously clips off and clicks up here. There's your electronic fire extinguisher system, handheld fire extinguisher. We made a nice little box for Sultan's helmet because who wants their helmet rolling around the floor? Sparkle seat again. We made carbon fiber quarter cards. Ah, there's no wind in here. And there's the fire extinguisher system on a nice punch to fledge panel. All pipe work, tube panels, firewall, firewall all bead rolled. You have circuit breaker in the back here. That little ow, black guy in the corner. Circuit breaker for your power steering system, which is in the boot. You have uh, two jumping posts here for the dry cell battery mounted here, socket breaker here for the main power, and you have your brake lines running back, splitting foot brake, hand brake, they're all true bulkhead, true to body. There's your electronic master switch wired into the wired into the car. A uh, little bit of dust in here, but with your carbon quarter cans, your wiring running up, the uh, posts for the oh crap, I'm getting old. The posts for the for jumping the car here when the battery is flat, the window clips out as you can see. So yeah, it's really tasty. Nothing revolutionary, just time spent correctly everywhere to make it all neat and tidy, accessible. And uh, it's just a simple, really nice interior, which makes a difference. Sultan loves his interiors and fancy stuff. So it's difficult with a Corolla, you know, there's a lot of gearbox in here, it's a small car. So it's difficult to make it too, too off the wall, but um, it's just really clean and tasty in the back. Right, under the bonnet, business end. So sorry about the wind, everyone. I just can't do anything about it. This is my only chance to do this video. So you just have to put up with me a little bit. So LS2, um, this was supplied by Sultan, built in the Middle East by his guys. Uh, pretty simple engine. I think most just ARP bolts, a cam, bits and pieces, um, very reliable. 466 horsepower it made. So in the Corolla chassis. It's nice and uh, light and it's plenty of power for the 15 inch diameter wheels. Uh, we fitted it, plumbed it, fabbed it, you know, did all the rest of the stuff, but the engine was supplied by Sultan and his boys. So you have uh, some custom stuff, a little lower mounted alternator here because we have electric power steering and electric water pump. So we delete everything off the front of the engine, which is completely horrible on an LS anyway, all this. I don't know, the, the, the water pump is horrible, the power steering is horrible, just looks terrible. So we like to make everything nice and tasty. It has a motor plate onto the chassis. Uh, that's how the engine is mounted. We use a pair of LS7 exhaust manifolds, which a lot of people are you know, surprised with. They're like, oh, has it got cast manifolds? And you're like, yeah, piss off, dickhead. Um, but <coughs> the concern was water lines, excessive heat from like four branch manifolds coming out uh, a lot of four branch designs are terrible they melt plug leads and stuff so we're doing our best to keep these plug leads and like these are fairly toasty from the last time um so yeah given the power figure needed like 450 horsepower these manifolds ls7 ones they flow plenty of of gas for that power figure so we don't need more exhaust gas flow um, so we kept the unit compact intelligently done and managing the heat was a big thing for reliability this car has been 100 percent reliable since it was built not one thing has been an issue which is what we tried to pride ourselves on so yeah all your water lines are running back you got the, the standard ls coils nuke fuel rails we did a little like a five degree throttle body spacer just to drop this it was touching the bonnet now it's nicely pointed down the uh, k filters out here gets plenty of cool air the 
oil filter relocator here, new catch can here, uh, new fuel filter, fuel pressure regulator, uh, all of our proper builds get a mechanical oil pressure gauge in the engine bay for the team at the track. So with any sensor or full electrical failure or screen failure or whatever, um, we know that the engine is healthy here. So it's a, a thing that we um, that we always fit to every car. It's, it's really worth its weight in gold to have that. Uh, what else is in here? So left-hand drive. This was a right-hand drive originally. It's actually kind of double-hand drive because the servo hole is still there and we used it to bring the fuel in and out. So it became handy. Left-hand drive, got a new master cylinder. The whole lot. Clutch cylinder is in here. Um, yeah, there's the knacker duck with the uh, venting for the leads. What else is interesting here? Cable throttle body for ultimate reliability. It's got a um, very expensive, oh, holly um, throttle body on it because uh, nine out of 10 throttle bodies available are shit at the moment. So you need to spend the money here or you'll be sucking in screws and getting uh, stiff um, throttle body butterflies getting stuck in the housing from cheap Chinese crap. So you gotta spend the money there. Uh, but it's just really nicely put together. All this is like off the shelf stuff from us. So full fabrication kit and the front cross member, the bumper bar. The bumper bar, as you can see, doesn't go out into the bumper because it's a universal one. So it fits lots of bumpers. So that's why it's not all the way out. Um, but it's just simple and tasty. Uh, steering wise, it has a full custom setup. So it's just kind of one off setup at the moment. It has a Sylvia steering rack in it. It has a custom cross member that we make. Um, this moves the steering rack 75 millimeters forward compared to the original Corolla, so a huge difference. Uh, using a Sylvia shock, custom shock top, which is just a prototype really. Um, 300 ZX brakes, as you can see. It has Sylvia four stud drop knuckles and trail knuckles so that gives us the four stud for the 15 inch wheels and that's pretty much it i think the steering the steering kit and stuff really makes this car as there's nothing really available for corollas that's any good so this all had to be custom done uh, to make the car work properly kind of a couple of compromises involved with the 15 inch wheels that i'd rather not have but the car drives really well so we we overcame them nicely tow hook bolts on here everything just kind of has a purpose it's neatly done it's very easy to work on very reliable nothing goes wrong and uh, yeah we're pretty proud of it it is a sweet setup inside in a little corolla so the turbo fans came from the fact that this car is just on kind of generic off the shelf wheels um now the car isn't owned by us, so it's owned by Sultan al Qasimi, as you can see. And the exterior of the car was very much a surprise. So when we launched this car a year ago in Mandelo, 2022, it, he had not seen the car, either had anyone else. So his first time seeing it was at the track, along with everyone else. So it was kind of a surprise. So I'm sure if he knew the car looked as absolutely mental as this, then he would... Um, have done custom wheels but with it being a drift car just off the shelf generic wheels is what he wanted so then this left us with an issue because we had so much track weight that we had to put a crap wheel on the front positive offset and like it's a challenge positive offset wheels are a challenge they don't look good nine times out of ten so i decided to come up with a turbo fan which is something throwback from the 80s I certainly haven't seen on many cars um, but it was always something that I wanted to do and just looking for the right project to do it so I designed these turbo fans to go on they attach to the custom wheel nuts here in the center it's just a center aluminium hub and this is um, polycarbonate or acetal one or the other and then all the slats as we call them they're glued into place they also slot into place down here into the center hub so it's a good unit but 
we very much considered you know real to real contact and it just being plastic there shouldn't be an issue there semi sacrificial I guess as opposed to anything heavier so yeah a bit of thought went into them since then the turbo fans have popped up a bit more and more on a few more drift cars but uh, I certainly hadn't seen any on any drift car when we built these ones and finally the rear so the two LED strips are cool as hell when they're lit up we have a custom red in here it was a Mishimoto dual pass we've it fairly modified mounts to the tube frame box section going across the back that mounts to the chassis he down here come on focus for me down here you have a uh, little aluminium wheel arch guards here they also bolt to the quarters they stop any foreign bodies or dirt or anything getting onto the wiring here this is just live true panel this is the back of your circuit breaker for your power steering your reservoir is here and your power steering pump mr2 is here um, quick change rear with a Sylvia subframe this is using our kit that we sell to mount a Sylvia subframe into a Corolla quick change rear thousand horsepower shafts custom bits and pieces there's two three inch exhausts heading out each side electric water pump here and uh, the water runs through here one forward that then splits into two in the uh, passenger compartment up here that splits into two to feed both banks of the block and then two come back from both banks of the block and the two of them going to the top of the radiator here uh, you have a power steering relay here because it's a big donkey of a 70 amp one it doesn't fit nicely and then everything else is in this Haltech box here so anything in the rear goes wrong it's in here so fuses and relays for the fans the fuel pumps the uh, water pump all that is in the back you have a ATL 30 litre fuel cell with a nuke CFC unit three pumps in there uh, really tasty nice job the nuke stuff is extreme quality and these are Mishimoto race fans also we had to duct this system to force the air out the holes in the rear because it was blowing around the side but now that is fixed with the ducting out the rear uh, it was just I mean it was recycling warm air which um, was a little bit inefficient uh, you get a small bit of creep on the temperature because of the inefficiency so once we ducted it and forced the warm air out pulled the cool air in it's been perfect you've got like little sacrificial quarter stays here hold the quarter there's where your clamshell goes on there's the pins for the boot and uh, yeah just very tasty there isn't a lot of room in the Corolla to fit everything in so you've got to get a little bit creative but still keep it kind of nice and tidy and accessible you've got the quick change differential breeder comes up here just leaves that breed make sure you get no oil out of it yeah it's a really tasty job we've got multiple silencer options for the exhaust they bolt on and off the rear frame in there all rubber mounted yeah so it's just a really tasty job right so that's it thank you for watching sorry about the wind and all that just can't do anything about it but uh yeah dmac so sultans dmac corolla yeah hope to see it again sometime but uh for now it goes to abu dhabi